Billahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulihi al-Kareem Part 3 The Second Wave of Hellenism Chapter 11 The Flowering of Philosophy After the first enthusiastic appearance of Greek ideas in the years around about 800 the majority of Muslim religious scholars made no further exploration of Greek heritage but contented themselves with criticizing or assimilating what was already present in Islamic works. It was this lull in exploration which justified the metaphor of the first wave of Hellenism. Before long, however, the beginnings could be observed of a second wave during the 10th century small groups continued to cultivate philosophy and this was closely connected with the study of Greek medicine and other Greek sciences. The Muslim students of philosophy were far from being fanatical adherents of Islam and in philosophical discussion and even in teaching. Muslim and Christian seemed to have associated on equal terms. The work of these groups culminated eventually in the outstanding achievements of Ivan Sina in both philosophy and medicine and these in turn led to acceptance into Islamic theology of further Greek conception and method through the work of Al-Ghazali. In the first half of 10th century philosophy was dominated by the figure of Al-Farabi. He is known as the second teacher Aristotle being the first. Born, though born in Turkestan he eventually studied philosophy and Greek sciences in Baghdad, where his chief teacher of philosophy was an historian Christian, while he was in contact with others of Christian Aristotelians there, such as the philosopher Yahya bin Adi. How he gained a livelihood is not clear, but since he lived an ascetic life, ascetic life his needs were doubtless few. In 942, he accepted an invitation to the court of Hadmian Prince Saif Ad Adullah in Alep and spent the remainder of his life there. His philosophy may be described as having the foundation of Aristotelianism and superstructure of Neoplatonic metaphysics. To this, he added a political theory based on the study of Plato's Republic and laws. The last element seems to be an original contribution of his own, but in the former too, he is developing the line of thought of Al Kindi. In the center of his metaphysics is the first being or absolute one, which was understood to be identical with God, uh, God as proclaimed in Islamic doctrine. From him emanated all existing things in hierarchical order. Similarly, in the state there is a head, the Ras, Rais, Rais, from whom all authority in states emanates in that he assigns men to their appropriate grades. In something, the way as Abbasid Caliph assigned men to various posts in court and administration. The grades are described as grades of commanding and obeying or of controlling and being controlled. At the foot in the lowest grade are those who are themselves controlled but do not control any other below themselves, while at the top is the Rais who controls other but is not himself controlled. The intermediate grades control others and are themselves controlled in varying degrees. Al-Farabi uses perfectly general terms like head rather than Imam or Khalif which could be which could be applied to non-Islamic states as well as to the Islamic empire, but he is thinking primarily of Islamic world. The first head of this ideal state is a prophet who has also the best qualities of the true philosopher. He is to be followed by a second head who should have slightly different qualities. If the qualities prerequisite for the second head are not all found in one man, then rule may be divided among those who share the qualities. Some of the description of such person could apply to the ulama and the students of hadith as they existed in his time, while the head might just 
conceivably be an imam or as conceived by the imamites. Perhaps Al-Farabi was deliberately vague and was chiefly concerned that philosophy should contribute to ordering the affairs of the caliphate. In the second half of the 10th century, we hear of a philosophical coterie in Baghdad which met in the house of Abu Sufyan al-Mantiqi, the logician. Unlike most philosophers, this man seemed to have no official position, though he was in favor at the Buwayhid court. Some of the discussion at his house have been recorded by his younger friend Abu Hayyan al-Tawhidi, who was an important literary figure, though he earned his living as a secretary to wazirs and other court officials in Baghdad and the provinces. Both men had studied under the Christian philosopher Yahya bin Adi.